Welcome back, you found Fritz. Today's video is the next installment of my tutorial series. Although these videos are intended for new learners of music recording, budget-minded or do-it-yourself musicians, aspiring recording engineers, or anyone interested in one of the products that I discuss in these videos may also find the material useful. And as always, you can find the links to the products that I discuss in this video in the description below. Thanks a lot, and let's get started. The focus of today will be Superior Drummer 3 by TuneTrack. I have been using this software myself for a few years now for drum replacement and song creation. In my opinion, it's the most true to life virtual drumming instrument on the market. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the process of miking up an acoustic drum set with the intention of completely replacing the live drums with samples provided in Superior Drummer 3 using its tracker feature. I'll be using Logic Pro as my workstation for this video. So before we begin, why am I comfortable using drum samples as opposed to renting out a great sounding room in a recording studio and sitting for six years and getting the drum performance just the way I like it? Well, like most people, I don't have the budget or the time for that. Also, the software advancements in virtual drums over the past few years have made it possible to get extremely realistic results on a tight budget and in a short time frame. And since the inclusion of Tracker in Superior Drummer 3, these advancements have gone even further. Now, blending kick and snare drum samples with live hits has been commonplace for roughly 35 years. This technique has given power and consistency to the drums on countless hit albums. Even rock albums that I grew up on and thought were completely live as a kid, like Nirvana Nevermind and the Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, used triggered kick and snare samples mixed in with the acoustic hits. You can easily achieve this technique with Superior Drummer 3. However, due to the addition of Tracker, it is now possible to replace the recorded drums entirely. And with a little bit of work, you can even replace the hi-hat and make it sound authentic. Not only that, but you can also fix your mistakes through editing inside a Superior Drummer or by exporting the MIDI to edit in your DAW if you prefer that. Personally, in the past, I've used Roland V drums for this purpose, and it was always laborious to get them to sound dynamic and legitimate. That's one of the main reasons why Superior Drummer 3 has proven to be a great investment for me. It has saved me a lot of time and it's given me great results. All right, so here we have my drums mic'd up and ready to record. I've got six microphones set up on the drums, one on the hi-hat, one on the snare, one on the kick drum, one on the rack, one on the floor, and one overhead aimed at one lonely cymbal. Since I can choose later on however many cymbals I really want to use on my virtual drum set, all I need set up right now is one. Aside from the cymbal mic, all of the microphones are close mic'd in order to get good transients to work with inside of Tracker. All of the microphones are connected to this very old Mark of the Unicorn 8 Pre recording interface. This interface is so old that it uses Firewire as a connection, which is no longer supported. So I had to use the rear ADAT connections to go into the back of my Apogee Symphony Mark II. However, you don't need expensive equipment for this job at all. Since all of the audio that you record is going to be replaced anyways, something like the Behringer Euphoria UMC1820 USB audio interface would do the job just fine. It has eight microphone preamps, which is more than enough, and it will handle all of the audio conversion as well. Now let's jump into Logic and get focused on the software side of things. Here we are inside of Logic Pro, and as you can see, I have each microphone routed to its own track. There's the kick drum, the snare drum, the rack tom, the floor tom, the hi-hat, and the overhead. And then I also have this guide track that I'm going to use to record the drums to. This is a bass guitar from a song that I've been working on. If you're brand new to Logic Pro, then this part of the video is for you. If you need help making audio tracks, then you just go up to the top here and click on Track, New Tracks, you select the number of tracks you want here. So in our case, we made five tracks. I ignored these checkboxes because it doesn't pertain to what we're doing. I just hit create. And then as you can see, here's five tracks here. Then to get to the mixer window, we just hit X. And here you can label all your tracks. Just double click on them. And for instance, I'll call this kick. And then the next one, just hit tab. And you can call this whatever you want, like the snare, and then so on and so forth. Then you can choose which input the kick is on in your audio interface. In my case, that was in 15. So you would just do that. And then the snare, for instance, was in 6. So you just hit input, go scroll down, and choose input 6. If you want to delete tracks, all you need to do is select the tracks you want to delete, and then just drag them over to the left like this. And then they're gone. Okay, now I'm going to select all the tracks that I want to record on. Hit the R button for record. 
and now they're ready to go. So now all we have to do is get some drums recorded. All right, so here's the snippet of drums that I recorded to this bass part. And I cut everything out before bar 27 because I'm not gonna use any of that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new track, a new software instrument track. The instrument I will use is Superior Drummer 3. Then for this song, I put together a custom kit based off of the Legacy of Rock library that tune track made with producer Eddie Kramer. It's currently my favorite tune track library. And here is the custom kit that I made. Now I'm going to click on this tracker tab right here. And what I need to do is I need to get all of these audio files into this tracker window. But first I'm gonna do something that's very important when you're working with Logic. I don't know how Superior Drummer syncs up with other DAWs, but with Logic, I'm gonna to have to import a tempo map. The reason for doing this will be clearer later on in the video. So the clearest way that I can lay this out is I'm going to make a new software instrument track, and then I'm going to draw in a MIDI file. And this is going to be the length of the whole track. I'm going to double click on this MIDI track. That opens up my, my piano editor. And then at the very beginning, bar one, I'm going to add one note. It doesn't matter which note you choose. All that matters is that it starts at bar one. Now I'm going to select the entire area and I'm going to go to File, Export, Selection as MIDI File. And this is going to go in my project folder. And I'm gonna call this Tempo Track. Now you can delete this track. Next, I need to find a way to get all of these audio tracks into Tracker. To do this, I go to the browser in Logic by hitting the F button or clicking this icon. And now, as you can see, when I select these individual tracks, they're also being selected in the browser. So for instance, if I want to find where the overhead mic is on my computer, I can just right click on it, show files in Finder, and then here's all my audio files. So I'm going to select the ones that I need. I'm going to go back into Superior Drummer, and I'm going to drag these into the tracker window. Now Tracker will analyze them. Next, I'm going to import that tempo map that I just made. So load tempo map from MIDI file and locate it through your finder. Now, as you can see, the tempo inside of Superior Drummer matches that of the tempo inside of Logic. All these small fluctuations in tempo change are the result of how I played this bass part. This method of working can be important if you're making entire productions by yourself. I found that if I base a song off of just a static pulse of a BPM throughout the whole track, then it's not as full of life as it would be if there was little fluctuations in the tempo. For instance, sometimes rushing a drum fill adds a certain amount of energy that you want. Or naturally, when you're playing live, there might be a small difference in tempo between the verse and the chorus. So translating that into a recording can be a really effective thing. So what I've started to do is I'll make a guide track. In this case, it was the bass guitar. And I'll record that in adapt mode in Logic. And what that will do is it will play a click track while I'm recording it. However, I can direct where the tempo goes. And then the tempo of this bass track will be baked in as the starting point for the rest of the song. This method has gotten me some results that I really like. All right, so now let's focus on the features inside of Tracker. When you dump your audio files into Tracker, it does a good job of naming them properly, and it gets you started with the editing as well. In this box here that says sound recognition, this is where you can choose what sound comes from what track. So Tracker automatically picked up that this is a snare drum track, and therefore it assigned it a snare drum sound. It's done the same with the rest of the tracks. It usually does a pretty good job of this. For the kick, snare, and toms, usually all you have to do is adjust these two sliders in order to find the right trigger points that you're looking for. The slider on the bottom is like a velocity limiter. It goes from 1 to 127, which is a standard of measurement for MIDI velocity. So as you can see, 
it's picking up a lot of stuff that I don't want to use. For instance, this looks like it's actually a hi-hat that's being triggered. So I don't want those. I would move up the velocity slider until they disappear. Then for the kick and snare and toms, I usually don't have to do anything with the top slider. And as you can see, I'll solo the snare drum track. Turn the mix to 100%. And it's triggering my snare drum just fine. This is what it sounded like originally. And this is how Tracker interprets it. So the toms, the kick drum, and the cymbals are usually just as easy to edit. So I'm gonna do those, and then we'll come back and focus on the hi-hat. Okay, I've got my cymbals, my snare, my kick drum, and my toms pretty much taken care of. As you can hear, they're triggering pretty well. And now let's focus in on the hi-hat. So I'm gonna play the hi-hat track back with 50% sample and 50% audio, just so you can hear what's being triggered. The problem is that whenever a snare drum hits, it usually triggers an open hi-hat, even though I'm just playing closed eighth notes most of the time. See, it's triggering all sorts of wrong articulations. So what I usually do with the hi-hat is I go to the sound recognition box and I choose, see how it says multi-articulations? I usually just choose closed tip or open edge depending on the song. So then once I'm done editing inside of Superior Drummer, I can choose later on whether I want each individual hi-hat to be open or closed. I'll show an example of that later in the video. So now we should just be hearing closed hi-hat. And we are, but we're still hearing a lot of hits that we don't want to have in there. Now, Superior Drummer gives you the option to reduce bleed from other audio tracks. So here I have the snare drum track selected. However, as you'll hear, that just basically removes the snare drum hits. So the hi-hat is only playing when there's no snare drum there right now. So that's not gonna work. Also, the way that hi-hat microphones are positioned a lot of the time, you're gonna get a lot of bleed from the snare drum anyways. And sometimes the snare drum transient is actually going to interfere with the hi-hat transient. So as you can see at the beginning, this first hit is actually a snare drum and it's being triggered on the hi-hat. We don't want that at all. So you may have guessed by now that I usually go through the hi-hat track manually and I remove and add hits as I need them. Now to do that, suppose I wanna get rid of this first drum hit because it's a snare drum, not a hi-hat. I just select it and I delete it. We know that this is a hi-hat, so I'm gonna keep that. And then we're just gonna go through the entire track and plug in the hi-hats where we need them. Now suppose, for example, this hit wasn't here. Suppose for some reason Superior Drummer missed this and it won't show up as a hit. What you can do is you can draw it in. You can just go to the Add tool up here and then you can manually find where the transient is and you can just add it manually. And now it will trigger. All right, so that only took me about one minute. A full song you can probably knock out in about 10, 15, 20 minutes max. Okay, so I've got my basic triggers edited. So it does sound a little crude because it's all closed hi-hats, but you should be able to hear that the dynamics and the original timing is there. So here's what it sounded like with nothing. And then here's what it sounds like 100% samples. Obviously, the articulations need a little bit of work, but the timing and the dynamics are intact. So now I'm going to export this as a MIDI file. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this export button. Make sure you have the tracker tempo map selected. Again, I'm not sure if follow host or song track works in other DAWs, but 
Let me just show you what happens when you do that in Logic. So suppose I wanted to dump this completed MIDI track into Logic using that method. You see what happened to my tempo track? It got all messed up. So I'll undo that. See, now it's intact. Go to dump it in. It's all messed up. So instead of that, I'm going to make sure I have tracker tempo map selected. I'm going to go to all tracks combined and drag it into this little window, line it up at one, double click on it. Again, I'm going to add this anchor point at the beginning of the MIDI file. And now I'm going to dump it into logic at bar one, close this out for a moment. And as you can see, the tempo is still going to follow the bass track. <laughs> And the MIDI file from Tracker is lining up with the original drums. So this may come across as one too many steps for something like this, but I've tried a few different combinations of things. This seems to be the way to work around Logic not really communicating very well with Superior Drummer. So now that I have this MIDI track inside of Logic, I'm going to delete this track inside of Superior Drummer. Because if it was there, then when I played this back, it would actually be playing two drum sets back. So we don't want that. So as you can hear, now everything is synced up. So the next step is to open this MIDI file, double click on it, and I'm going to edit all these hi-hat notes. Usually all of the other drums are pretty much done by this point as far as the MIDI is concerned. But I'm really going to dig into the hi-hat track and make those articulations match my original performance. Or I might even mess around with it and see if I can improve on it. So I'll see you back here in a minute when I'm done with that. Okay, so this editing took me about a half an hour. But I really wanted to dig into the hi-hat track. I moved some other stuff around. So really what the tracker feature in Superior Drummer 3 has allowed me to do is to use my acoustic drums as a drawing board, like an idea station, and then I tweak the end result in the MIDI. So now I'm going to get rid of the original audio files, and this is the end result of what I did. <laughs> So while that by no means sounds like a finished produced track, it's well on its way. So as you can see, I really got into this hi-hat track. Chose what articulations I wanted to use. And chose the dynamics I wanted to use as well. And then I did I and then I did mess around with some of the kick pattern, but in the end I think it was the same as it was originally. So that's pretty much it. Now what I would do is I would go through the rest of the song and write something that would complement that. And inside a Superior Drummer, I didn't put anything on the mixer. So these are, as I understand it, to be the raw drum hits from the mics to the preamps to the recorder. So if you'd like to see the next step and how the journey for this song unfolds, then please check out the first installment of my creative series videos. In these videos, I walk the viewer through the process of what goes into writing, arranging, recording, producing, engineering, and mixing a song from the original idea to the end result. If any of that interests you, then check out the playlist called To the Moon in a Hurricane. Also, if you've gotten anything useful out of this video, then please give it a like and subscribe for more stuff. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.